so welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at a game called Wild Blue Yonder. This is from GMT Games, came out just last year in 2017. Um, this is a game in the Down in Flame series, as you'll see here. Uh, it's designed by Chris Janiak, probably a butchering of his name. But um, this is a standalone game, and the Down in Flame series has been around for a long time, and there's been a lot of different titles using this system, a lot of expansions and extra things. So this is what GMT came together and, and they thought, well, we'll bring kind of everything together and make basically what's kind of like a definitive one box edition. And so this is a huge, this is a three inch kind of coin combat commander size box and it weighs an absolute ton. It is chock full of cards and player aids and rules and campaigns and tokens, things like that. So what we'll do is we'll kind of crack it open and take a look. Uh, before we just wanted to draw attention to how much I love this artwork. Now, I am biased. I am a sucker for an air war game. I grew up making 172 and 176 scale airfix kits and uh, matchbox models of the old Spitfires and Hurricanes, Typhoons. and We used to just play with those as kids and then strap fireworks to them, all that kind of stuff. It was a blast. Um, so, um, immediately, this is a beautiful, beautiful box, and the artwork is, is top-notch as well. Kind of text on the back, um, this is not a solo game. This is a competitive card game. It's a tactical game. You have, um, you have a, an airplane, and then you have a, like a wingman as well that you kind of semi-control. is not as good. So, you basically got two fighters, and it's, this is a dog-fighting game. Um, it's, it says complexity 4, take that for what you will. Um, to just, to play a dogfight takes 15 minutes. Um, if you want to do kind of the campaigns, you're talking about an hour's worth of play between, um, doing scenarios, things like that. And that can get into a lot of extra bits and pieces. But once again, I am extremely enamored by this artwork. So let's open it up and see what we've got inside. So it starts off with some of the rule books. And there's a couple rule books. We have the dogfighting rule book. Once again, a beautiful, beautiful artwork. Mark Wolf going down in flames. Down in flames, imagine that. Um, this is just, it's unbelievably nice artwork. I couldn't be happy with that. So dogfighting rule books. This is probably most of what I'm going to play with. I mean, we'll do campaigns just to get them done. But this is volume five of the Down in Flames series. So... But you don't need any other editions or, or anything else to play with this. And it includes a lot of redone rules and an amalgamation of a lot of other bits and pieces in the series. So, um, take that kind of for what you will. The rule book, this typical GMT book, so this is 20, 20 pages of dogfighting rules. And I imagine, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't look too bad. It's kind of typical what you'd expect. Lots of diagrams, and there is an extended example of play on these last two, three pages. So you'll be able to walk through and do that. But you can kind of see, just as an idea, um, you've got your two fighters and two enemy fighters, and you literally position the cards and turn them based on relative position, distance, things like that, and altitude tokens. So pretty neat game, plays quickly. I'm sure it's fly in, maneuver, shoot, maneuver, strafe, try to blow each other up kind of thing. This is a campaign rule book. Again, I just I um, just love the artwork in this so far. Just beautiful. I think we've got a 109 going down in the background here. Um, even just the moody, cloudy sky. It's very evocative of what things like the Battle of Britain and generally the air war over Europe kind of what it looks like a lot of the time. So it covers 1940 to 1944. You got a lot of different planes in here, and this is Europe, so you won't find any um, Japanese planes in here. Although I know that there's there is a Japanese kind of uh, game called Zero, I believe. This book is much bigger. This is 40 page rule book, and there's a lot of text in here. So this is uh, all the campaign only rules. So you've got a lot of different stuff in here to do with bombers, ground targets, um, linking scenarios. Uh, a lot of different other stuff. So we'll kind of plow through that and have a go at that. Got a nice campaign sequence of play on the back. 
where you've got leaders, um, and just a lot more extra bits and pieces. And there's, I think there's night mission stuff as well. But that's that's the campaign. So that's something to look forward to. And I know a lot of uh, these bits and pieces here. So this is the first, this is a half counter sheet here. So you've got named pilots, which you'll play through campaigns with. And there's a, there's a couple of campaigns here. Apparently you can play normal dogfighting with these. Uh, if you wanted to balance it, like if I had a very experienced player, he would play with that one. And if I was a newer player, I might play with one to give myself some kind of bonuses, almost like a handicap in that way. Or you could just choose to do this for fun. Uh, but there's a ton of those um, for each other. Looks like we got uh, Russian pilots, German pilots, American pilots. Up here you've got RAF. So that's pretty cool. That's Those are nice looking counters. And then we've got uh, various tokens here. So we've got damage markers. At these are altitude markers here, I believe. And then there's a bunch of different markers. So you've got bomber tokens for, for the campaigns, game turn markers, base pilots. Uh, various, and these, there are various tokens like full throttle, just to indicate that that's what you're doing. And there's uh, various um, conditions and, and, and modifiers to remember when you're doing that kind of stuff. And so there's a few other different markers here. A lot of this is for campaign stuff with blockbusters, bus, block searchlights, um, all that kind of stuff that you have to avoid when you're doing strafing runs or when you're bombing, things like that. So a lot of bits and pieces there. And I know a lot of these cards are also um, for campaign based play and they'll tell you what you've got. So I think these are probably, these might be kind of ed different mission types. There's a lot of these different cards and they've got great, these are historical pictures on here. So you've got these docks, a supply depot, we'll kind of come back. You've got here air reconnaissance, you've got the old mosquitoes here. Those are just really cool. Always nice to have good artwork when you're playing games like that. Ground forces, that's a cool picture there. Um, there's So there's naval missions as well. The different targets that you're going for, yes. And so here's, here's a, a few, here's the campaign cards. There's quite a lot of them. Let me just take them out here. Oh, there is a lot. Uh, I think that's one of those. those are, so. You've got Rommel in North Africa, so you've got Air War there, and then into Egypt, so you've got two different ones. Nine. You've got the Defense of Malta, or the Offense of Malta. Barbarossa, so you'll have Luftwaffe on uh, Russian Air Force, and then you've got Stalingrad Airlift. I think that'd be a very interesting mission to do, very different type of mission. Uh, you've got Kursk, and then the Schweinfurt Raid, so this is more Bombing raids, protecting the bombers. Eighth Air Force, as you can imagine. Very similar type of thing. Battle of Britain. Battle of Britain, second edition. Oh, sorry. That was Battle of Berlin, I apologize. This is Battle of Britain. And this is, this is, this specifically says second edition, so I guess there's a first edition somewhere, and this is probably slightly different from that. Operation Pedestal. So those are the different campaigns you can work through. Um, Looks like we've got Doodlebugs. Oh, this is part of Battle of Britain as well. So there's a lot of different bits and pieces here. So we've got strength charts. So you, this is you've got campaign tracks, different um, transport mission turn tracks, a lot of different bits and pieces for doing a campaign. This is the resources card. So this is played. So you've got uh, a lot of campaign based stuff here. But you also have, uh, this is basically a glossary. Um, if you know, it says vital target, what does that mean? Just look it up here real quick. So that's actually very helpful. Always love it when you've got good blades and GMT's very good at those. Okay, there we have a ton of campaign logs. And these are thick, very uh, heavy glossy card stock. I guess they're semi-gloss. So Battle of Berlin, Allied campaign log. So I get those the same, Battle of Berlin. Let's take a little look here. And on the other side, this is the Axis campaign log. 
I most likely would be doing some photocopying with these to do those. Campaign logs. Other campaign logs, this is for Operation Pedestal. This is Allied campaign logs. And you got the axis again on the back as well. And then these are land campaign logs. I think these are a bit more standard, so you kind of have a more generic one that doesn't have all of the extra bits and pieces that those other two campaigns have, I guess. There's a bunch of those as well. Again, I don't think those are both the same on both sides. Stalingrad. Again, more Kursk on the back here. And that Britain. And on the back here we've got 8th Air Force campaign logs. So again, we'll be doing some photocopying of those. Keep it saying there's a lot of those in there. And the rest of the game is honestly just cards. Because the, the gameplay is a card game. I think I'm just going to check. Alright. There is a plastic um, game insert here. Which has all these cards neatly sorted in here. Nothing underneath. There's a couple of dishes if you wanted to put trays in there, but if you wanted to pull the tokens in there, I'll probably do some bags and stuff first. So there's a ton of aircraft. I think these entire four decks are all aircraft to give you an idea of how many different planes there are in the game. So if you're playing just dogfighting and you're going to use two aircraft each time, I mean, you're going to have endless possibilities of what you can do. So let's crack this open. Oh, if I can. There we go. Just to show you what the aircraft look like. And we'll start here. We've got the hurricane. And this is ironically it's a this is a Russian hurricane on land lease. Got some Russian fighters. So these are I'm gonna kinda of show you. These cards have a pointed edge. These are almost like a reference card as opposed to like a rounded edge of the action cards which we'll get those out so it's a little bit different there uh, using clear sleeves for both of the both sides of these is going to make them not fit in the box but might might well do that for protection for people who are going in for a heavy number of plays but if you look there's a lot of different just so many different aircraft here and usually you get one or two or three of each different type some different color schemes on them yeah. And then so we have some light Beaufort and medium bombers here. Boston, you've got Halifax, very heavy bombers here, Lancasters. Uh, the bombers again, not used in the dogfighting. But if you look at the card, the bottom half is your cockpit that's got kind of your um, statistics there on it. Then you've got a picture of the plane uh, from a top-down view, and that's what you'll use when you're turning or when you're chasing people. There's kind of different configurations to use. And then this number up here is upside down because this is a reference of your enemy. You'll, look, you'll be looking at that number, the enemy's ones will be kind of facing towards you in that way. And they have a reverse side, but it's the same plane on there, but it looks like that's a, a much more reduced side. So this one has a little bomb counter, level one. This one has the bomb gone. Uh, so that's just, that is one of huge number of these. I'm not going to crack them open, but you can imagine just how much fun there is going to be in this if you're a big Down in Flames fan. Um, the action decks, there are two separate action decks. You have Axis and Allies. And we'll open these. These are what drive the game. You'll have your plane and your wingman out, and then you'll have a hand of action cards that you can kind of decide and, and choose what to do. And there is a ton of these. I think it's, a, it's over a hundred in the deck. And we'll go through a few of these. So you've got the red, these red cards are attacks. And then there's these blue cards, which are responses. And then there's white, well, this is somewhere. There's white cards, which can be used as either, but not both. So you'll have a hand of cards and you'll be playing those to, in order to perform actions. But what I really wanted to look at, again, is the artwork of the game. So, if you look here, on the planes, this is more of just like a, a graphical diagram, which is fine, it is what it is. Nice and functional and very clear. But for the actions, well, oh, you've got these beautiful, beautiful artworks. It's like looking at photographs and paintings. 
And these look like they're probably rendered with the same software as the box art is, but oh man, I am a, I'm just a huge sucker for that style. So you got a Spitfire coming out of the sun. This beautiful, like, this is cool to have a hand of cards that looks like this. Just pleasing to the eye. And you'll be playing turns, so you're going to do a barrel roll, and it's going to affect how your stuff moves in relation um, to enemies. Got scissors. I just these are so great. I don't know, I'm kind of butchering these, putting these side by side. But this this is the allied deck, so you've got all, it's all Spitfires. And then the attacks, you've got like ME 109s and, and the sights and things like that. Let's whip open this, because these should be different. Yep, it looks like they are. It looks like they're the same pictures, but they have different planes superimposed over them. So that was a way to, to make making the two decks easier. So you've got a half loop. If you look, it's exactly the same background. This one's got a Spitfire. This one's, you got yourself a 109 there. Well, let's just take a quick gander through those. Yeah. These great 109s flying through the clouds. So these ones got Spitfires in the crosshairs. Just, again, this is just gonna be a gorgeous game to play with. And, I, and it's a very different style of war game. I don't know if I've played a game like this in the sense that it's a two-player tactical game. That's just a that's a card game. I think this is gonna be fun. This will be one, you know, 20 pages of rules whilst seems a lot for a 15 minute game. There's probably just a lot of different exceptions and situations and advanced rules you can put in there. But I'm hoping it's quick learn, quick play. That's really what I'm going for so that you can bash out a lot of different plays. And, and honestly, that's it. Again, there is four times as many cards as, as we looked at with just these plain ones. There are so many in here. Um, I'm just gonna kinda get it out and we're gonna play with this soon. I'm very excited to do so because I've had my eye on this series for a long time but it was like, ugh, Rise of the Luftwaffe, the original game came out in 93 and getting a hold of it was something else. And there was a bunch of different ones I didn't know where to start. So Wild Blue Yonder being kind of a definitive edition, I was very pumped. I'm like, great, this is where we'll start, this is what we'll do. Um, so that's it. That's what's in the box. Just an absolute inordinate amount of paper and card. Which, I mean, if you're just doing dogfighting, you won't use most of that. Um, tons of planes to play with. Beautiful decks. This is going to be a great game to play. Very excited. So I appreciate you tuning in and watching. Uh, my name is Alexander. We've been from theplayersaid.com. And watch out for a review for this one coming soon.